Utah Raptor Prime is an incredibly aggressive subspecies of Utah Raptor found on the island. It tends to travel in small hunting packs, attacking smaller prey with its sharp teeth and enlarged foreclaws. When hunting in packs, the pack leader can vocalize a signal that acts as a battle cry. Be prepared to run or fight if you hear the call of the Utah Raptor. The pack will repeat the calls and attack with much greater intensity. One of the faster creatures on the island, Utah Raptor often uses their pack numbers to their advantage by swarming around their prey before it can react. The large curved talon on the second toe of this subspecies seems particularly suited for dealing significant damage. Utah Raptor Prime usually kill its prey with numerous slashing and biting attacks in rapid sequence. What the Utah Raptor lacks in size, it makes up for in ingenuity. Rather than chase down smaller creatures, Utah Raptor will pounce and pin its prey to the ground rather than chasing it around. Despite its normally aggressive nature, Utah Raptors have become one of the primary combat mounts for roaming bands of raiders, as well as scouts for larger collectives. Those who ride Utah Raptor claim they are difficult to tame, but then fiercely loyal. As a carnivore, once tamed, they require a steady stream of meat to sustain. Of the many creatures I've yet encountered on the island, the Iguanodon vicissitudinus has the distinctly versatile capability of switching its primary method of locomotion according to its momentary needs. Primarily a rather lethargic bipedal herbivore native to the island's many grasslands and forests. In situations where increased speed or maneuverability is called for, it will quickly shift its posture into quadrupedal stance and behave like a very different creature. While bipedal, it can employ rapid stabbing attacks with its distinctive thumb spikes. In quadrupedal stance, conversely, it seems to have an endless supply of stamina even while sprinting. Interestingly, the Iguanodon's thumb spikes also provide it with the capability to pick seeds out of fruits, allowing a farmer to easily convert stacks of fruits into stacks of seed for planting. Combined with its highly effective fruit harvesting and substantial carry weight, the Iguanodon's excellent mobility in bipedal stance makes it an ideal field hand that can also pull off a quick getaway or an agile defence when needed. Titanomyrma is one of the smaller creatures on the island. A frightening thought when you realise it is the size of a dog. A hive-minded carnivore, Titanomyrma is aggressive on sight to humans and their creature companions. When attacked or threatened, it releases a chemical which alerts all other Titanomyrma in a large range to help fight the aggressor. While small, Titanomyrma remain a threat because of their bite. Titanomyrma mandibles produce a toxic venom that causes loss of stamina, preventing escape and increasing the chance of losing consciousness. I've seen two varieties of Titanomyrma, drones and soldiers. Drones are smaller, faster, and landbound, with the intent to harvest for the colony. Soldiers are larger, slower, have wings, and they defend the colony. If Titanomyrma is akin to hive insects, there must be queens too. But I have yet to encounter such a variant. Because of its hive mentality, I've not seen any successfully tamed Titanomyrma on the island yet. Fortunately for lone survivors, Separated Titanomyrma can be easily picked off for a small supply of chitin, among other natural resources. Quite possibly the most intelligent non-human creature on the island, Truden Magnanimus is an incredibly fast learner. It understands meaningful experiences much faster than other creatures, including humans and its social nature means it also teaches its packmates, making them smarter too. If Truden's cleverness didn't make it formidable, then its tactics and biology would. 
It specifically pack hunts at night when we are most vulnerable and sees humans as its primary prey. This audacity is made especially dangerous due to its serrated fangs poison, which drains stamina from any creature, but outright paralyzes humans. Thankfully, Truden is fairly small. Were it larger, it might well have become the dominant creature of its ecosystem. I thought Truden simply could not be tamed until I finally saw a lone survivor with one. She told me that she let Trudy hunt a few of her tribe's smaller creatures for sport, and it eventually started following her everywhere. It seems that while Truden is too intelligent to fall for the rote conditioning of trank and feed, it can instead gradually gain loyalty from a social approach that provides it with the opportunity to hunt. Ever since, I have wondered at the benefits which a pack of ultra-smart, bred-for-battle Truden may bring to a tribe brave enough to earn the favour of these clever carnivores. Pteranodon wyvernus is a large pterosaur, capable of flying more quickly than any creature I have witnessed on this island thus far. It seems to have relatively poor stamina in comparison to its quick speed, however, making frequent pit stops on the beaches before taking off again. While other humans I've seen on the island still insist on calling it a pterodactyl, this is inaccurate. Pteranodon wyvernus' poor fighting and defensive skills mean they are likely to scavenge any number of dead animals rather than engage in dangerous combat with other creatures. They also flee at the slightest sign of trouble. Because of this, they are one of the most common creatures to be found darting across the island skies. Pteranodons seem to be among the most popular flying companions from what I have witnessed. Possibly because they are relatively easy to tame with a slingshot or bow. Mounting a pteranodon must be among the fastest and safest ways to get around the island, but it doesn't provide any measure of secrecy in comparison to travel on land through the dense foliage. One of the smallest predators on the island, Comsignathus curiosicaris, can be seen as a pet, a pest, or a threat. While alone, Comsignathus is not dangerous or aggressive. In larger packs, however, it remembers its underlying carnivorous nature. After a group of Comsignathus grows to a certain size, their pack mentality always seems to embolden them to attack. For some reason, Comsignathus is not naturally afraid of humans. Rather, it seems to be quite curious about humans and their instruments of survival. They tend to be drawn towards humans out of this curiosity and then call their pack mates to help explore their discovery. This usually leads to aforementioned pack aggression with dangerous results. Comsignathus gain increasingly significant attack power and speed when in close proximity to other Comsignathus as their pack aggression takes over their behavior. Additionally, their distress call carries quite far, rapidly alerting the tribe and its pets to danger more efficiently and increasing the likelihood of forming a so-called compi gang. Microraptor narrolongus is one of the smallest non-avian dinosaurs on the island. Incredibly fast for its size, Microraptor is a voracious carnivore, aggressive towards anything regardless of size, Microraptor fancies itself an apex predator. It will attack humans on sight, especially if it's not alone. When hunting, Microraptor's speed is only one of its assets. While not quite capable of sustained flight, its wings allow it to stay aloft for several seconds while jumping. This allows Microraptor to attack its prey's vulnerable areas, as well as search for small river fish. Notable, the creature also tends to use this ability to knock oblivious humans off of their mounts. While not a powerhouse against armed enemies, Microraptor is particularly suited to dismounting enemy riders. Microraptor's natural tendency to attack weaker creatures means they can ignore the mount while attacking the rider with leaps of fury.
Mesopithecus amicifer is an omnivorous monkey species, primarily inhabiting the island's jungles. It is smaller than a human, but can scurry about the same speed. It does not appear to be aggressive, unlike its relative, the Gigantopithecus, but is rather very shy towards humans, likely due to their much larger size and lack of hairy exterior. Due to their skittish nature, they can be difficult to tame. They can be hand-fed if you are patient, but stick too close to them for too long, and they'll get spooked and run away. A common pet, Mesopithecus is very easy to keep fed. It will eat nearly any fruit harvested on the island. Mesopithecus is most often used as a social companion, as it cannot carry enough to be a beast of burden, is not large enough to be ridden, and is not particularly good for combat. It is, however, quite effective at vocally warning of incoming intruders and pelting them with copious amounts of tossed faecal matter. Nomadic tribes have also managed to teach Mesopithecus to open locked doors when pillaging. Pachyrhinosaurus midisaura is a medium-sized herbivore found almost everywhere but the island's mountains. It is generally calm and ignores all other nearby creatures unless it is attacked. Pachyrhinosaurus possesses a particularly unique survival skill. When threatened, its massive nasal boss releases a chemical into the air that calms other nearby creatures, making them less likely to attack it. Affected creatures are sometimes hungry enough to ignore the effect, and humans seem immune to it. Conversely, it can seemingly invert this phenomenon at will and coerce creatures into attacking it. Pachyrhinosaurus is an excellent starting mount for anyone new to taming. It is fairly easy to train, can carry enough to be a simple pack animal, and is not as deadly as some of the larger herbivores. Additionally, Pachyrhinosaurus can release its unique chemical on command to protect itself and its rider from nearby predators, or draw attention if desired, making it a potential lifesaver in a pinch. Oh. 